Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here. So today we're going to take old images from 1.5 and we're going to convert them to SDXL and fix the faces. So the goal is to fix the faces because there's a lot of wonderful images that 1.5 has created, uh, at least with the base model, uh, but I didn't like the faces. So we're going to do face refinement in here. And then we're also at the end, we're going to throw in Roop, which is the ability to take an image and replace the face with a face of someone else. So that's kind of a fun little thing. I've been doing a bunch of images of my wife and throwing them at her, and she thought it's pretty cool. So we're just going to play with that a bit. But beginning of this video, we're going to walk through how to create a template. So the templates are something we keep doing. Uh, the beginning of this video has always been the same thing. It's always create the base graph and then go forward. And I'm dropping different tips and tricks as we go, but what we want to do is create a template. So we only have to do this once from this point forward. Otherwise, these videos are going to get really long. So we're going to build the ultimate SDXL base here. It's not going to take very long, and then we'll be able to use it over and over from this point forward. Uh, so again, if you're a, a sponsor of this channel or a grader, uh, I'm going to put that in the, um, the post area on YouTube. So you can go ahead and grab that graph and then import it into your comfy. Uh, so thank you very much, you guys, for supporting the channel. You mean a lot to me. And again, we couldn't do this without you because the revenue on YouTube is not fantastic. So I really appreciate what you guys are doing for me. So let me know what I can do for you. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and jump right into the graph here. We're going to build this out again. The idea is to handle a 1.5 SD image and then convert it to an SD Excel with a better face. And then we're going to go through a couple because there's some really janky faces and I need to fix them. Uh, so this will be a really entertaining process, I'm sure. I'm not going to cherry pick the results either. So we'll see just how it goes. All right. As I said, we're going to try and build out a base template we're going to use over and over again. Again, I'll throw in some tips and tricks as we go so it isn't boring if you've watched me do this a thousand times. Uh, so first of all, load node loaders and then load in our checkpoint. Now we're going to want one for our base and we're going to want one for our refiner. Okay, now that we've got both of those loaded, we're going to go ahead and process the clip for this. Uh, now, oh, before I get going too far here, inside of your manager, you are going to want to load in a custom node, and that is the impact pack. It's right here. It's a load number two here. Uh, Dr. Lieutenant Data, the same person who brought you the wonderful manager we're using here, um, also has this impact pack. We are going to be using the hell out of this thing. So make sure that you load it. Uh, we're going to use it a ton. Uh, so again, impact pack. And it will install us a, a couple different models and so on, but just let it do its thing because uh, we're going to, again, use it a lot. So the first thing we want to do here is get our clip model loaded. So SDXL, and we're going to load the one for up here, and then we're going to load the one for the refiner as well. Uh, there are two different ones. Now, the difference between these is that the one for the refiner has an aesthetic score. Uh, so the aesthetic score here for the positive is 6 and for the negative is 2.5. Now, again, these are numbers that internally at stability, these are what we use, but uh, again, that's probably changed over time and you do you. You know, if you feel you have a better idea, uh, feel free. I mean, there's no stopping you from doing whatever you wanna do here. It's kind of fun to kind of experiment and see where you can go with this. So I'm going to go ahead and color these up. Just so I remember them, this is going to be the red. This is our negative and the green is our positive. And because this is going to be a template I'm going to use in this point forward, I might as well go ahead and retitle these as well. That way we have this forever. All right, so here I have my positive and uh, my negative uh, for the actual base. Now, the difference between the clip G and the clip L, uh, clip G is kind of the one that understands you better. It's uh, kind of thinking like the more rule following. It kind of gets you, it speaks better English uh, than the L. But the L is more of your, artist, or your artistic, your feeling uh, that type of thing. So use the combination of them together. Now my negative prompt, I'm not going to uh, use the L at all. I'm just going to stick with the G and the refiner only speaks G. It doesn't speak any L. Uh, so we'll just be working with the here. And again, we're going to color them and title them. And go ahead and hook those up. And that's basically it. We're going to use this over and over again, right? Uh, so to make this uh, really nice, we can actually just highlight all of these and then you can right click anywhere and go down to align and we can align them to the right. So now they all line up and we don't have our, our uh, OCD triggering constantly. Uh, there we go. Now we do want to say this is a template and to do that, you just right click and select everything that you want to here. And then we're going to right click, but not on top of one of the nodes. This is key. Otherwise it won't work off of the nodes once they're selected and you see that there's save selected as template. So we're going to call this the SDXL base. So now in the future, we can just go and right click anywhere on our graph, node templates, SDXL base, and boom, there we go. So we don't have to do this over and over again. Uh, but again, I did want to show you how to do this because it is very handy for node groupings you tend to use a lot. All right, so as I said, what we want to do is we want to take 1.5 images and fix the face. 
Uh, so the reason we did all this first and we haven't uh, made a template with anything else is because this point is where the graph changes. And we're going to use, again, a very cool thing inside of the impact pack called the pipe. And a pipe basically takes a whole bunch of these noodles and combines them into one line that is then our pipe. So that way we're not dealing with like a bunch of buses or, or other lines stringing everywhere. And I absolutely love this concept. It keeps the graph nice and clean, but yet allows you to break things out when you need to. So if you double click and type in the word pipe, you'll see two detailer pipe SDXL is the one we're looking for. And it takes all of these inputs and converts them into one line, which is pretty sexy. Uh, we also have the ability to add an Allura if we would like from here. So let me go ahead and hook these up real fast. Okay, now there are two others at the bottom here that you may not be familiar with. And that's B-Box Detector and SAM Model. So what we want to do is load in the, um, the B-Box, which is going to be our bounding box for trying to find the face in the scene. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. Now to do that, we're going to use another one of the things that includes in the uh, Impact Pack, and that's called Ultralytics. So you type in UL and you're going to see Ultralytics Detector Provider. Remember things that start with a provider uh, kind of come before the node, uh, but are used. Uh, in a lot of situations, the provider is used every single step, uh, but in this situation, I think it's just used at the beginning. So in this in this case, we want the B-Box here, so we'll go ahead and grab that. And it comes with this one here called the Face Yellow M8, and that stands for you only look once, by the way, not for <laughs> you only live once, it's only you only look once. We want that one, and then we need a SAM model. So we'll go ahead and if we drag that out, by the way, you'll see that there's a SAM loader, which pops right up. So that's super easy to figure out. And we're going to use the one that comes with it again here. And that's basically it. We don't have to come back to this other than to change the prompt. So this will make life a lot easier for us because we only have one line to go from here on out. Okay, now that we have this in place, uh, we can bring in whatever image we need to from 1.5 or whatever model. Could be mid journey, could be a photo, whatever, where you want to replace the face. Uh, so we need to bring this detail pipe out to do face detection. So we bring that out and we see here, here's a face detail pipe. And look at that, it is a K sampler combined with some other little toys to help us use this uh, bounding box and the segment model to find the face and then replace it. Uh, so this can add details to a face. That's its full job. And it's gonna use down here, this model here, this you only like once face model, uh, which is a fantastic model, by the way, uh, for fixing faces. So this key right here is all we need. Now this should fix most faces in one go, but we could do multiple steps with this. We can combine this with another one and kind of pass the ball or the face as it were from one to the next. Uh, so from here, let's go ahead and load in a model or I'm sorry, load in an image. So an image, and then we want to load an image. So this is the one I want to bring in here. I love this image. It's fantastic. The only thing I don't like is, uh, whatever expressions going on in her face there. Um, great picture. Like I really like the whole fold in the dress across the steps, the flowers. Uh, this is the 1.5 base model, by the way. Um, I really use that base model a lot. Uh, really enjoy it. And it doesn't have some of the biases or uh, forgetfulness of some of the higher trained models. So this is one of the reasons I really love it. Uh, so we're gonna start from this. And this is the image we're gonna bring in. Now we're gonna put it over here, which is a little awkward. And we're going to do that because I want to kind of have the beginning, middle, and end pieces over here. Uh, so that's why it's positioned in this awkward manner. And then uh, from here, this is the image that's going to come out of this first face detector here, or face detailer, I should say. So we'll put this over here and we'll preview it because we may not choose to save it. We'll see how it does. But what'd be interesting though, is if we bring in like what it looks like if we just crop out the face, what's that look like? Well, let's show that. Uh, so from here, the number of steps we want. Uh, well, let's go ahead and, and crank this up to say 35. Uh, Euler is fine. Uh, Denoise is the critical part here, man. This is the face. So it's going to look at this shape and the direction of light and so on. A 0.5 is probably fine. You could probably drop this down to 0.4 and still be pretty good. If you make it too high, it's not going to have coherence with the rest of the image. And it's going to look like a, a face that we just pasted right on top of a random picture. Uh, so not very good. So we want to keep it like this. So this should look pretty decent out of the bat. Now, there's a lot of other settings in this thing. There's a whole lot of things going on here. The grid size, max size, there's a lot of documentation for these uh, to determine how best they work together. I just leave them at the default. And if you're not getting the results you want, then I would dig into it and try and figure out if there's things you can change. If you're dealing with something that's out of scale, this force in paint can help. 
Uh, so that's the only one I would recommend that you may toggle on and off. Uh, but for the most part, um, most of these settings work pretty well. Uh, and then obviously refiner ratio is a big one as well. So how much of this SDXL refiner you want to have a play in here and 20% is probably fine. In fact, probably recommended. Uh, so 0.2 or 20% would be where I would go. So that means that the refiner is going to have 20% of play in the image. So if we go ahead and warm this up, by the way, let's go look at our prompt. I just have elegant woman in the uh, spot there and then beautiful woman. I have no negative here. Uh, we could throw it in like the word blurry, which I really don't understand why that's so popular, but we'll just leave it there. And then the positive here for the refiner, elegant woman's fine and then no negative. I really don't use negatives much with SDXL. I don't see the reason. And then here, uh, if you want a Laura, go ahead and throw that down. I'm not going to use one. And so let's just see what this looks like. Okay, so we see a close-up of the face here. That's much better than what we had before. Uh, so a big improvement there. And let's improve uh, our view here by scaling this up. I wish there was a really nice button to kind of make this so that we could just kind of maximize the size of the image, uh, but there's not. So we'll just do this fiddling around that we always do until we get up where we want it. So I want to have kind of an A, B comparison. By the way, they did set this so the middle mouse button now moves the canvas or the nodes around, which is really nice. Uh, before it was hard to get a space where you could use your mouse. Uh, so uh, this is okay. Let's try another prompt here or another uh, run. Okay, so here's where we landed. Um, it looks pretty good. That's just the face, obviously a good improvement over whatever that is. Uh, so this looks pretty good. Happy with that. So can we improve upon it? Well, we could do another one. Um, you could just fit another piece sampler or face detailer in the middle. Uh, pretty simply because it's using the pipe so we can continue on uh, by just throwing the pipe over to this throwing the image that came out of whatever the first one was that'd be this one and we would have another image here so this method and maybe we save this one because it's going to have uh, two shots at making the face correct the first one is to fix the majority of the errors then kind of hone in on it and then from here maybe a 0.4 maybe we just go with a 0.3 a little bit less because we're getting closer to what we want and run this prompt through. I did not make a face um, detail. We should have maybe pulled that off, but uh, we kind of see here that it did indeed add a little bit more volume to the face and so on. It's still not perfect, but again, we do have a random seed here. So every time we select that and run it, it's going to produce a different face here, which we're going to build upon later. Uh, so this step may be unnecessary. It really depends on how messed up the face is. Uh, when you're arriving. So a lot of the 1.5 models right out of the bat were just not great at faces. So sometimes this uh, double hit on them is working pretty well. Let's just go with one here. And now let's uh, let's do the Roop thing. So Roop is pretty cool. It allows us to add a face uh, that we know into the image. And we're going to use the image that comes out of this to put into that Roop. Now that requires another custom node. So if we go into our custom nodes here to our installed, we can see down here, we have this one, the reactor node 0 0.1.0. Uh, this is a group-like uh, face swap, and this is pretty great. So if we check out the GitHub for it, uh, it has instructions for you to follow. If you're using an automatic 11.11, you can do that as well, and it requires installing a lot of other tools, which I did do, because I was trying to get this to work with automatic 11.11 to begin with. Eventually, though, you just come down here to the simple, comfy directions, and it's really simple. Throw this in here, run install.bat, and it does all the goodness for you. Now, because I did this already, I really don't want to show this and say, hey, this works automatically. If you have issues, I would post them up on GitHub with the developer so we can work with you on getting through those because I'm really not helpful there because I try to do this the hard way, I guess, uh, before we get to the right way. Uh, once you have that, we can go here and find the reactor face swap. And this is pretty interesting. So we're just gonna pull this image that we produced here into the input. And for the source, we're gonna use a picture uh, from a hard drive. I'm gonna use one of my wife actually. Okay, I have this picture here. Uh, the great thing about being a professional photographer is I have a lot of great pictures of my wife. <laughs> so I'll put this up here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap out the face, the zero face in the input so it's the upper left-hand corner is zero for each face. So, you, so as you go from, from left to right, it'd be zero, one, two, obviously. And then from top to bottom, you would also increment. So it's possible for you to take a face that's specific 
in either the source or the input and swap them. In this case, it's the only face. Uh, so it's going to be the zero position in this image and the zero position in this image, uh, which should be enough. And you can also gender detect as well. Uh, we really don't need to do that here. I'm going to get rid of, well, well, I guess we'll leave all these here. Why not? But this fixed face, I think, is worth applying to the roop first. I think if you do the roop against the, you know, torqued up face that comes from the 1.5 or wherever you're getting it, may not be a great addition. But with the face is more normalized, I think the roop would has a, it just has a better chance of success. Uh, so let's pull that out and let's save that one because I'm sure she's going to want these. So let's try that now. Okay, one thing to be aware of too when you're doing this is you want to find faces that have a similar expression to the target. So if she's grinning her butt off, uh, it may not be very good. Uh, in this case, yeah, it does look like her. It's not a great match though. So let's just spin the wheel again here. I'll make sure I don't have this set on fixed. I don't. Um, I want to make sure I have enough noise. So I'm just troubleshooting this, right? Um, a 40% noise is pretty good against that. So it's going to give us this face, which looks pretty decent. We're going to take that result, this result, push it up into the face swap, and bring it down. Now, this face against this face will result in a slightly different image every time. So I would, again, work with it until you get something that works and looks more realistic compared to the person you're trying to inject into the scene. Again, expression. Uh, direction of lighting hasn't mattered as much as I thought it would. Uh, it tends to fix that as it's applying the face change. Um, no, oh, that's pretty decent. I mean, it looks very much like her. Uh, so that's decent. But let's try one more. Um, let's, let's actually go for a different image completely here and see what we have. We can uh, do another demo with. Let's just run with this one. So when I just dragged it in here and plopped it right into this load image, which is the other thing I really like about the solution is we can just kind of thunk it in here and it will work. Um, ideally, we would convert this to an SDXL ideal resolution uh, before we continue to work this through this model. For this case, I'm just going to demonstrate how this works in general. But uh, all the little tiny nuances we've worked with in previous videos, obviously observe those if you're trying to make a permanent solution. Let's just see what this looks like. And it obviously did a nice improvement with the face here. Uh, so this is the original. This is our improved face. And then there's one with my wife's face on it. <laughs> that actually worked out pretty darn well. Uh, so yeah, that, that works great. So Roop is kind of a fun little thing to throw in here. Uh, this... In this case, the face wasn't pretty messed up to start with. So if the face is really torqued, I would really impress upon you to use this uh, face detailer. And especially if you're not applying a roop and you're just trying to fix a face in general, like if you're one of those people who's a big fan of having vacations of, vacation photos of people you don't know, and that's your goal behind uh, using AI, great. I'm more from the painterly aspect. I really like these images that look painted and more ethereal. Uh, so that's the direction I'm going with these so it's pretty cool to be able to apply a face of someone I know to one of these. I had this really great idea of decorating the house for Halloween and replacing all the photos. If we're going to have a Halloween party and replacing all the photos with like creepy photos, but with all the friends that had been invited. So when they're walking around looking at the photos on the wall, they would all be like, oh, here's a bunch of people around a casket that I generated in Stable Diffusion, but I replaced the, the, the pictures with their faces. I thought that would be really hilarious. So we'll see how ever that goes over. But anyway. It's a good example of how to use this face detailer as well as the pipe. We're going to use this pipe a ton. And then again, how to use the template. So if you want to bring this up again, now if this is something you're going to use a lot. You could certainly create a template of this entire thing. Uh, but in my case, I really don't need it that way. Um, I tend to just do this over and over again. And then from this point forward, it's uh, random depending on the, the type of solution I'm trying to solve or the type of problem I'm trying to solve. So there you go. Hey, everybody, thanks for hanging around today. I hope this was entertaining and you learned something from it. Let me know in the comments what you think. And again, everybody who's a supporter of this channel at sponsor level or greater, again, click the shiny join button down below, and then I will make sure to get you that graph from today so you can go ahead and play with it locally yourself. Uh, so let me know what you think in the comments. Everybody take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you all next time.